Standing by. Standing by. Oh, oh, the red light's on. Oh, sorry. Season finale. Condors unleashed Barts. Yeah. And my, my earpiece doesn't even work yeah. anymore. So, by the way, uh, year three of Condors Unleashed. Uh, Got to send a special thank you, Louis Amistoy, John Farron, Chris McCullough out there. They do a fantastic job helping us uh, when we are able to do a show, which of course is each and every Tuesday as long as the team's in town. Condors have home games pretty much the rest of the way on Tuesday, so that's the reason why there's no Condors Unleashed. We might go live on location though, but it's travel, travel, travel. Too. We travel, go to Texas. It's tough. It's not easy. It's not easy, Barts. Texas, not easy leaving at 11.30 on a Thursday for San Diego. San Diego. And ha- I mean, you Austin. Have to, you have to brave the three-and-a-half-hour bus San ride to hang San out. San Antonio. At, hang out at Pacific Beach an entire San evening. Antonio. It's not easy, Barts. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not Welcome easy. back. This is Condors Unleashed. Bakersfield.com, my 45 on Saturdays at 11.30. Joining us for our player segment, Condors winger Rob Klinkhammer and uh, Clink, let's start there. The travel out in this uh, Pacific Division certainly, uh, certainly conducive uh, to everybody's uh, needs and desires for for playing hockey uh, in terms of weather, locations. I mean, you can't beat this. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the weather's great. Uh, you know, I played in Phoenix for a couple of years there, so yeah. I kind of missed having the sunshine, uh, wearing flip flops and stuff to the rink. So it's it's great to be back in that. And talk right into that microphone. Yeah. There. Okay. You're there good. You go. There yeah, you're go. good. Parts gets a little nervous with the, the volume. Well, I can't you hear can't, anything. You right? can't hear anything. I don't he's know how good. he's yeah, yeah. He's great. All right. He's great. Uh, you know, you come down here uh, for the second half of the season, uh, basically. What was the, the mindset when you did come down here to Bakersfield, and how have you kind of, you know, adapted here over the last couple of weeks? Um, well, originally, uh, I just tried to take it in stride. I mean, I was, I was kind of pissed off, um, you know, as lots of guys are, but uh, there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to come down here and play your best, and I thought I did that for a long time. Uh, I just wanted to try and get recalled, so that was my attitude coming down here. You know, uh, I, I think you kind of touch on something, you know, our fans here don't realize, you know, they're they're excited. They want to come watch you guys. They're excited when someone gets down, but, you know, as a player, obviously, you're always striving to play at the highest level possible um, and, you know, trying to deal with, uh, adversity really of being sent down it's uh it's got to be difficult yeah exactly it is uh, everyone in this league wants to be in the nhl and uh you know i was there for the last uh three or four years or whatever it was and then when you come down it uh it's a bit of a kick in the pride uh but you just you, you can't get too big and never think you're bigger than the game or anything like that so that's what i that's what i tried to tell myself and just came down here and busted my butt and I don't know, tried to put some points in, play well, and wanted to get back up there. How exciting has the last couple of weeks been in terms of, you know, playoff atmospheres? You know, you have the intensity with San Jose, the the intense games down in San Diego, uh, you know, coming down the stretch and battling, you know, for a playoff spot and to, to get into the postseason. Yeah, it's it's been great. It uh, makes it a lot easier to get up for games. You know, they're tight every night. Um, we're playing teams that we're trying to catch every night, it seems like. So, uh it's been good, and being in a playoff push is always fun. The games are a little more intense. You know, every, every night it means something, so that's been great. Um, and, yeah, we're just having a lot of fun with the guys right now. You know, this uh, – your stat line pretty good here. You certainly got off to a great start after you came down. What um, – as far as the, the difference in speed and everything, I mean, was it much of an adjustment for you? Um, it's not an adjustment when it's slower. So <laughs> it's, it's a little easier, obviously, coming from the NHL to AHL. Um, like I said, it's, it's not quite as fast. It's, it's a little, it's different. I mean, sometimes the NHL, it's easier to play because guys are always where they're supposed to be, um, positionally and everything like that. But, uh, there's a lot more mistakes. It's a little slower in the AHL. Um, and I I think there's a lot more scoring opportunities because there's a lot more mistakes. So, um, it's a little funner to play in games like that, uh, when you're getting chances often and getting lots of, lots of shots and when it's a little back and forth. I mean, right off the bat, shorthanded. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've gotten some great opportunities while shorthanded. I mean, is penalty killing, has that always been a part of your forte? Uh, yeah, I've killed my whole life. I didn't really kill in the NHL. Um, I n- never got, like, an extended look at that, which, I mean, whatever it is, what it is. But, uh, yeah, I just try to anticipate. Um, when, when you're on the power play, too, you sometimes you get a little lackadaisical right. on defense, and I think that's the biggest breakdown. Uh, guys don't come back as hard, or if there's a bobble puck, they think someone else is going to get back. So uh, you just got to try and jump on opportunities like that. Now you have a young son. Uh, 
best name going. <laughs> Still, I mean, we've said it a lot, but but Gunner, I, I mean. Gunner Clinkhammer. Gunner Knox yeah. Clinkhammer. Doesn't get much better than that. Uh, but how has, you know, and, and that's an aspect I, I think that, that fans and, and, and maybe those, you know, outside of the room don't, don't really see on a day-to-day basis is, you know, at the end of the day, this is a job and, and there's a personal life, there's a family. How has having a son and, and, and being a father, how has that kind of changed how you are on the ice or, or maybe your routines here over the last uh, couple of months? <laughs> Definitely, my routine has changed. Uh, there's not, there's like, not as, what routine, right? Yeah, there's not as much downtime as uh, I used to have and enjoyed. So it's a, lo- a lot more busy. Uh, but my wife is great with them. Uh, she spends a ton of time with them, obviously, with us on the road and um, game days. You know, she really tries to plan around me so I can get that hour and a half nap and tries to keep them quiet and has all my food ready still wow. and everything. So yeah, so I guess, she's the all star. Yes, yeah. She's <laughs> treat me. She's treat me well at home, but. Uh, yeah, when you get traded around and stuff like this, it's it's a bit hectic. Um, you know, just mostly living situations. When you have a young kid, it's you want routine and you know you don't want to be going out for meals like three meals yeah. a day because it's a nightmare trying to keep them quiet or with trying to keep food on their plate and stuff like that. So um, we got lucky. We got uh, into a place down here that uh, kind of fell into our lap. Got a short term lease, so it was great. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 not ideal when you're getting moved well, around a lot. Well, and I was, you know, and we talk about the personal life, but how much of an adjustment is that? And obviously, this Connors team has a lot of young young players on this team. But how much of an adjustment was it for you, uh, getting married, having a kid, you know, houses, leases? I mean, this is a whole second career, if you will. You know, it's probably your first career in terms of the pecking order. But how much of an adjustment is it when you are growing up and also trying to develop yourself on the ice? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think people, ho- I think hockey players are lazy to be quite honest with you. <laughs> like guys will be like, oh, he I got said it. Not us. He <laughs> said it. Off the ice. Obviously yeah. on the ice, you know, we bust our butts and we, but then like away from the rink guys are lazy. It's like, oh, I got such a big day. I gotta go to the bank. I'm done. At, <laughs> I'm done at noon. Like just, I used to, I worked when I was in junior. Like yeah. I know what it's like to work a 40 hour week. Uh, it sucks. I don't like it. <laughs> but like, hockey. yeah, but lots of guys that have never worked, um, I think they they have they think they have a lot more on their plate than they do, and I mean, you don't we don't live in a fantasy world. Someone's yeah. not just gonna like right. cook your meals and like set up your place and make your bed for you. Like that's part of being a human being. Yeah. In my concern, I mean, lots of people say you know just concentrate on hockey. Well, you know if you just concentrate on hockey all day, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. First <laughs> of all, and you have to live a life and learn to be a mature human being at some point in your life too. So. I think we have it. We have it quite easy. We work half days. We get off at noon. Um, so if you got to find a lease in the afternoon, you got to go to the bank and get groceries. You like got time. like you boohoo. Time. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's a tough life, but like somebody's got to do it. This is so. fantastic. This is life lessons with Rob Plinkham. This, is, Plink-Hammer. this is the best season You're, finale you of Connor's. You're a motivational speaker, man. He, this is great. I could have used you to come to my apartment when I was in college and talk to all of us. Like yeah. we were the same exact way. Like, yeah. oh my god, I have to go to the grocery store today. Yeah, it's yeah. such a big trip. I it know is, it's, it's, it's terrible. I gotta get food to feed myself. <laughs> it's <so laughs> terrible. Where's uh, where's the work ethic come from? Obviously, you know Lethbridge, uh, you know blue collar town, and uh, you know where's that work ethic uh, come from uh, growing up? Oh, just my family. Um, both parents worked really hard, and um, we I didn't have a lot of money coming up. Uh, didn't come from money, but uh, my parents always made sure we had everything we wanted. Like, you know, I got to play hockey every year. My grandma got me new skates every year. Dad always got me sticks. You know, mom was putting food on the table, got me road hockey stuff. So, I mean, you don't need much more than that as a kid, yeah. right? You got the love of your family, a roof over your head, and food to eat. I mean... And I had hockey gr- whenever what were the and hockey new <laughs> hockey skates every year like I, I had a great childhood and I don't know my my dad worked for the city for about 30 years and my mom she's still working away and um that's just kind of where I got it from uh just a blue collar attitude I guess maybe from the city too what was the uh what was the jobs growing up for yourself um <laughs> my first ever job I worked at like the fair in Lathbridge <laughs> So I was like, me and my buddy, yeah, like running the Ferris wheel or no, 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 it was was actually me and my buddy uh, Chris Verstig. He plays in the NHL now too, but we were running the chip truck, so we would just deep fry French fries all day. (laughs) And then we got fired. Like we were just doing stupid stuff. Like we were giving all our friends free French fries, and we deep fried a teddy bear one time and stuff. It was, 
It wasn't good. That, that's a health code violation. Oh, yeah, it definitely yeah, you wasn't You've got to change the oil level yeah. after that. I mean, if you're worried about, like, health code violation <laughs> out of, like, fair food, like, it's... You should what? Be at the fair. You should maybe go have yeah. lunch somewhere else. You should have that gluten-free pizza. Deep-fried deep Twinkies? Yeah. Come yeah. on now. Yeah, that's healthy. Yeah. yeah, but in junior, I always worked... Uh, I worked for the natural gas company in Alberta. It's called Echo okay. Gas. But it was, it was a really crappy job. I, like, would dig basically ditches around gas lines all day so i had to have like full coveralls on oh it was about 30 degrees outside celsius celsius, celsius. celsius yeah. yeah so i don't know what 90 95 yeah, and yeah. full coveralls not hot, hot. so hot. I, yeah i come home every day with heat rash and like dehydrated i have to go to the gym after yeah. that actually and it was <laughs> that, that was not fun so i was like i don't want to do this i want to play exactly. hockey <laughs> we uh you know we talk about this season up and down from from edmonton uh, here with the condors what's What's kind of next if you, you know, kind of look in your crystal ball for, for Rob Klinkhammer after the summer? After this summer? Or, or into the summer? Or, into the summer? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I definitely could take a vacation at the end yeah. of the year. So <laughs> we'll be doing that, and then uh, we'll go home. Um, I'll start training again. And, I mean, life's not too exciting when you have a young child yeah. either. You know, like you got to – he goes to bed at 7 every night, so you got to <laughs> – be home to make dinner at five and, if you're uh, lucky yeah if you're lucky oh he goes to bed well he doesn't always stay asleep but he, yeah. that's when he goes to sleep where's uh where's but, the vacation plans anywhere uh, you uh, have your mindset on yet we or? got lots of friends in phoenix okay. uh like i say one of my friends is playing in la maybe yep. we'll go watch some playoff hockey there if we're not in it i don't yep. know we'll see hopefully we are um probably just around pretty close to here actually maybe stop in palm springs and then nice. uh go home and see some family and then I don't know where I'll be playing next year I got a one-year deal so uh we'll see what happens this summer and just get ready for that well we appreciate the time yeah Thanks thank for you for having on. me Rob Klinkhammer joining Thanks, us Rob. here thank on you. Condors Unleashed if you're watching on my 45 hope you enjoyed the uh, season finale of Condors Unleashed coming back Jose Rivera will join us make some picks we'll talk some of those Condors night coming up Saturday night here in Condors Town. don't go anywhere this is Condors Unleashed Bakersfield.com my 45